Hello, I am Lux, and I have no issue with my parents. And I am Ember, and I plead the fifth. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 8, Episode 8, The Parent Map. Obviously a play on the movie Parent Trap, but not a play on the movie The Parent Trap. Play on the name of the movie, but not of the content of the movie, which by the time they did the remake was highly inappropriate in my opinion because don't give kids hope that divorced parents are going to get back together hmm completely forgot that was that hmm. yeah yeah because the guy was trying to marry someone else and the two girls basically pranked the living heck out of the woman and she ran off and then they needed something to get their parents back together is how i vaguely remember it now but this had nothing to do with that. It's all about relationships with your parents. I have a very excellent relationship with my parents. I mean, when I was growing up, my parents watched anime with me. How cool can you get? Me and my mom were both a big fan of Sailor Moon. Also Dragon Ball Z. My dad could care less. But he like was like, eh, go ahead and watch your shows. I'll just sit here and look at my books about uh, tools and farming and pruning trees. My dad's a landscaper. My parents were awesome. They're still awesome, actually. But onto the actual episode. Interesting. I didn't, at first, because of the name, think it was really going to be their problems with their parents. I knew it was going to be part of that. But I didn't realize it was going to be their friendship problem. So I was like, does the map really work that way? Would it bring them there to solve that? Because usually the friendship problems the map solves is actually kind of a piece of a big world problem that will help solve something in the future or prevent something from happening. And I'm like, now that I think about that, making sure these two are good with their parents is actually a good idea since they are two key people in the tapestry of the Equestria world. But the thing is, the friendship problems that the map tends to send everybody on, and I have to say buddy... <laughs> because Spike has been sent, tend to be relatively recent. So why is now a good time for the map to decide that this friendship problem should be solved? Something coming up involving those two? Or was it just a good opportunity because the two of them were kind of tearing the town apart by following two different paths? Ah, so it solved two problems at the same time. The friendship map has a tendency to do that. You know, be efficient and all. It is a magical MacGuffin. Uh, Sunburst was so excited. I'm like, wow, two episodes in a row where we have prancing. Also, I love that beginning intro. That was fun. Uh, why am I yelling? <laughs> uh, he's like so excited, and then he finds out, oh, that's that's where we're going. Luckily for me and Ember, there wasn't a lot of cringe in this episode. There could have been, but there were some parts where we're like. I do like the gate, though. It's like, okay, yes, it's annoying. <laughs> also, the pony with the essences. Could could you get a little more shopping mall? I mean, just walking by the perfume section usually kills me. I think that was a, kind of the point. I know, but it just points to how she was basically turning the town into a shopping mall. Would you like to try a scent? Psh, ah, I didn't say anything. I was going to say no. Ah. Also, I was like, Psh, oh, that's, that's. Pungent? <laughs> Just a little. Always in the face. You'd think his glasses would help protect him, but not so much. Oh, that stuff can sting and burn and permanently damage someone's eyes, people. Don't aim for the face. Aim for the wrist. It's actually a better place to test out your product. Though, here's a problem, though. There are people who are extremely allergic. And others who are just extremely sensitive. Just getting on an elevator can be dangerous. Oh my goodness, some people put perfume on every five minutes. Yeah, or they put on way too much. You're like, it's a dab. So there you put a little bit on one finger and you hit both sides of your neck. You're good. And if it's a spray, you spray it in front of you and then walk through it. The perfume, the reason it's so tiny and so expensive is you're not supposed to use a lot of it. Uh, but back onto the topic at hand. Ancient pony grains. So apparently making what he was currently making wasn't good enough. We had to go back to the old recipes that there's a reason we don't use anymore. I know where you could sell it, though. The pie farm. 
I mean, they eat rocks. I was thinking, uh, send it all to the dragons because it's basically rocks. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I can see that. Hmm. But the pie farm too. I mean, they literally had rock soup. But did they actually eat the rocks, or was the rock just a flavoring item like a bay leaf? They ate the rocks. I'm pretty sure in that ac actual episode, we we see them eat the rocks. We. Could have sworn they were ponies, not griffins, because I could see griffins eating rocks because, you know, birds a lot of times need a cleansing material and griffins are part bird. I'm pretty sure the pies ate the rocks. I'm pretty sure we're on yet another tangent. We're very good at that. Now, where did I put that road? Mm. Trying to get back on the tangent. Not, not, not the tangent, the back on the story. So yeah, they thought the friendship problem was the parents splitting the town in half. Then they solved that problem. They were like, I, I wish they were arguing again. Because then they weren't paying as much attention to us and they're driving us crazy. Now what are we going to do? We need to find this friendship problem, but our parents are driving us crazy. It's them, isn't it? Dang it. So what were the most annoying parts of this episode to you? They're not my parents. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the most cringiest, the um, nitpicks, the... What drove you crazy about this episode? It's interesting to wonder if this is really directed at the target audience. Also, we did another parent thing just two episodes ago. Hmm. With the whole Terramar situation. I just realized there's lots of... There are a lot of parent things going on in this season so far. Not just these episodes, but even in the School Days episode. Parents were involved. Parents slash guardians. I wonder if they're doing that because they mostly focused on what the kids were going through in the first several seasons. But maybe this is now trying to focus on the parent-child relationship in this season. Possible, because we're kind of getting a lot of that here. I mean, because this show's gone on for eight years so far. So the kids who started watching it eight years ago are now eight years older. Assuming that they're still watching which they probably are plus you have new viewers tuning in and catching up so they're allowed to write slightly higher content as it were possibly because some shows evolve like that and some don't but parents usually don't have much of a role in a lot of kids shows you know they'll be there to pick the kids up from school or provide the occasional sound advice but they're not usually a focus well, maybe they want to focus on that in this season and help kids have better relationships with their parents. Though this makes me go, I, I hope to see Twilight's parents again because they were fun. Well, I guess they could also be relevant in the teen years, but the relationship issues that Sunburst and Starlight were having with their parents tend to be adult children parent relationships. Well, I was thinking, and what you also mentioned, is it would be more of the tween and shifting into teenage years. Because if you can nip some of these problems in the bud during that time period, they won't become major problems later in life. Because, you know, it could start out as a minor issue and then grow into what Starlight and Sunburst experience. Not wanting to go home ever again. Well, the thing is, people care about how they're treated. And they don't care for how their parents treat them, but they're your parents. It's difficult to say negative things to your parents. These are the people who raised you, guided you, put a roof over your head, possibly bought you a car, put you through college, taught you all sorts of life skills. Even if it was just by bad example, you learned something. So it's very difficult to have that kind of communication. It's easy to say, I love you. It's easy to say, I appreciate what you've done. It's a lot harder to say, this thing you're doing drives me crazy. And here are the reasons why I would appreciate you not engaging in this behavior. And these are the reasons I think this behavior is unnecessary. Yeah, I've never really had those moments with my parents. We've always had a really good relationship. We always talked about everything. I mean, I learned about the birds and the bees before I never really, I ever really needed to learn about the birds and the bees. Because they were like, you know, getting you ahead of time is the best way to prevent you from doing anything stupid. So giving you an idea of what to do when it actually happens is a good idea, other than shielding you from it going, no, we don't know about this thing called the birds and the bees. 
Why do we need to explain it to you? It's best to keep you ignorant. So when you do stumble upon it, you'll have no idea what to do. Yeah, that's apparently what most I've heard of other parents teaching methods about the birds and the bees is like, yeah, we're embarrassed about this. So we're not going to tell our kids how to avoid this embarrassment. So, ooh, how did that happen? Well, you never explained it to them. <laughs> it's kind of like the fact that when I was really young, I actually watched Aliens. You know, the first Aliens movie. I hid behind my, my mom's chair for most of it, but I did watch it. Oh, kind of like Steven at the uh, viewing party in Steven Universe. Hmm. Man, my parents have a really good understanding and relationship, so I've never actually experienced these things that I heard other people. Cause all my friends throughout school were like, man, I hate my parents. I'm like, I, I'm sorry. So from my point of view, it's hard to understand some of these problems that a lot of other people have experienced in their lives with their parents because... Well, you're kind of in the minority in that your parents are together and that overall you've had a very good, open, honest relationship with them. Yep, I've always been able to tell my mom if she's driving me crazy. And she goes, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize I was doing that. Yeah, mom. <laughs> The only time my dad ever drives me crazy is when he's like, so how do I close a window on the computer again? It's the X, dad. The little X in the corner. I just find it funny that both my parents took to tablets like no one's business. They figured out those things so much easier than they did any of the personal computers they've ever had. Uh, and let's not mention your dad can handle a tablet but still has a flip phone. That's mainly because the flip phone is so much tougher than any smartphone. I would have to buy him one of those military-grade ones. You know, the ones that can take a bullet? <laughs> this show is doing a good job of, like, expanding what they need to cover, you know? Because dealing with relationships with parents is a good way for them to go. It is, because it's something that pretty much everyone can relate to. Even if you're not with your biological parents, you have some sort of parental figure or legal guardian or someone that you are not on the same level with. You know, a mentor. I mean, look at Twilight and Celestia. Celestia's older, has more experience. Twilight looks up to her. Mm -hmm. So you could apply the same things from this episode to any sort of relationship where the two people are not what you would consider equal. They're in different places in their life. They have different backgrounds, different expectations. This episode specifically deals with some of the transition from when you need to be more hands-on with your offspring to when it needs to become more equal. When the parent finally realizes that I'm talking to another adult here <laughs> instead of I'm talking to my offspring, I'm talking to an adult that I happen to have helped raise. I say helped not just because two parents, but because... The world around your kid also helps raise them. Friends, teachers, life experiences all have an effect, for good or ill. But parents spend so long raising a child that it's a role that you take on for so many years and you get into such a pattern that it's hard to let go because you're in a routine. And our brains like routines. Even if intellectually we know a routine isn't good for us, we will fall back into it under stress because it is familiar, because it's a routine. I should know. Routines help me a lot with my Swiss cheese brain. And if something falls out of routine or the routine's still bad for me, but I do it anyways because it's routine. Yeah, I've experienced that. So that's another thing is on the parent side, the realization that, oh, things aren't the same. Though I like the reasons for both parents. Both of them were trying to help their child cope with something that happened in their lives. Which was very nice. That they actually gave reasons for the parents' behavior instead of, Oh my goodness, my parents drive me crazy. But, you know, the best of intentions. I know this from experience once again. I'm doing this to help you. I'm up to my midsection in boiling lava. How was this supposed to be helping me? Ooh. That wasn't supposed to happen. I, I meant something completely different. I was trying to help Onyx. Well, well, I'm, I'm sinking into the lava now. I'm dissolving. You be happy. <laughs> Good thing this is a fictional universe. Maybe in the next episode, you'll come back to life magic. Where did he go? Uh, children's shows. 
for kids. Also, American society, violence, no problem. Anything that has to do with sex, nope. Yes, I was I was mostly saying birds and the bees earlier because it was funny. Because that's so often how it's referred to. What does the birds and the bees have to do with, you know, what I want to do to that girl over there? <laughs> or in some cases, that boy over there. Or, I don't want to do that, Dad. <laughs> yeah, because remember, there is a spectrum of sexual things going from, I want to bang everything, to, nah. Quite literally, it goes from everything to, nah. I don't care if you're purple with pink polka dots, too. Nah. Uh, th this is one of our otter tangents. <laughs> yeah. One of the major life lessons, you But moving on to anything else we want to say about this episode? Like the very end where they're like, must get on the train. Must get on the train. <laughs> and I'm like, you're unicorns. Just wink. Yeah, go poof. The oh, problem is both their parents are unicorns. So I was like, wait for us. No, no, because that's not part of the plan. <laughs> they have to follow the steps of the plan first. That reminds me of that scene where they both pull out scrolls that were like at least five, ten inches thick. That looked longer than some of Twilight's lists. Ooh. That's saying something. Yeah, because she makes a list to make a list, then uses that list to make another list to make another list to eventually get to packing. And then there's Mia goes, well, I need pants, right? Yeah, I need pants. I will put in the bag right now. Not the ones you're wearing. Oh, well, I'll get some out of the drawer then. That's the laundry hamper. Oh, you're right. That is the laundry hamper. It looks nothing like your dresser. You're right. This is not my clothes. Put that away. This is the one of the tangiest episodes we've ever had, I think. Well, I don't really have a lot to nitpick, and I'm pleading the fifth on most of it, so... Yeah, it was a very enjoyable episode. There were just, like, a couple of points where that just, like, oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. I think it was mostly to deal with the mom, though. I think the cringiest moments for me involved what the mom was doing to help things. I don't remember being that too cringy with the dad. Well, the mom was trying to manufacture problems. Oh, yeah, that's where I was cringing the most. The father was just focused so much on the history and the bylaws and making sure that you had the whole big picture and focusing on things that were very unlikely to have any relevancy to the current issue. I mean, it's a good idea to get all your facts, but he spent all his time in the past, like, Okay, so now that we've gone over the founding, here's the possible friendship problems that could have arisen over the past however many years since the founding. Also, I've never noticed any kind of tagging on the map itself. So how does everyone know where areas are on the map if they don't know the area? Because they've, they've named areas on the map before we actually knew the name of the area on the map. I've never seen any labels on the map. I can understand Starlight and... Sunburst, knowing that area, but I just realized, like, wait a minute, there have been there have been times where, like, oh yeah, there's that area named this, and like, no one mentioned it, and how do you know what the name of that area is? You're not Twilight, because I can see Twilight doing that, and any place that some pony's been to, like, obviously Rarity's gonna know Canterlot and Manhattan. Just the thing that struck me right then. Oh well, back to our random thoughts on. Parent problems. Because <laughs> Sunburst's mom just wanted him to succeed so badly that she's like, well, I will set up something you can solve. It doesn't work that way. We already solved the problem of you guys messing with the town, and that wasn't the problem. So you can't manufacture a problem because we were called because a problem already existed. So a new problem isn't going to fix the problem. Yeah, we need to find the problem that already existed not that far in the past, Dad, and solve it. Ah, though, another thing I'd like to point out is I love the current season set of expressions. Everyone has gotten a big upgrade on how the face works. Because there have been some awesome expressions this season. Just Starlight, her expressions, and some of the expressions from Sunburst. Oh my god. 
and how frazzled they both looked. And also his nice dodge of his mother's attempt to trim his beard. That was awesome. Because for a second there, oh, it's going to be, oh, nice. <laughs> dodge, which shows that this is an ongoing thing. Because action, counteraction. And speaking of ongoing things, should we actually end this ongoing thing? <laughs> Oh, I wanted to bring up, okay, I know ponies are clothing optional, but how many times was his mother going to lift up his cape? <laughs> I was thinking that too. Like, kind of reminds me of the Applejack going, we're all naked. It's more a matter of personal space and personal boundaries. Neither of their parents had that concept whatsoever when it came to their kids. No, I'm just going to stick my hooves right on your cheeks and rub them and call you adorable names that you hate. I, I know you wanted to, like, freeze time for her and everything, but, you yeah, know. Also, I love the, I know I made some mistakes, and I'm thinking, oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I love how we kind of gloss over that. Yeah, I know I've made some mistakes, but I've learned from them. That's kind of part of what growing up is. Uh, Starlight, I kind of hate to point out you were already a mayor when you took over the town. Yeah, and um, I also kept saying every time the father was like, Oh, you think? It's like, Dad, I grew up and tried to take over the world. Leave me alone. <laughs> I know. I was seriously waiting for that to be her response. Mm hmm like, I tried to take over the world twice. I almost destroyed all of Equestria <laughs> by breaking up the main sex. And changing time. I literally altered time. Because I was expecting that more that kind of outburst and more of him having a realization that his daughter's grown up of, you did what? You're grounded. I'm an adult. You can't ground me and I don't live at home. Okay, I'm putting you in arrest. I've already been under arrest. I've been paroled. I am now a teacher. Well, a teacher's assistant. Guidance counselor. See, I've been through enough that I can now guide other people not to do the stupid things I've done. See, I'm an adult now. And why is Sunburst's mother so worried about him? He is the guardian to the first naturally born alicorn in millennia. Yeah, I'm like, why didn't you bring this up, Sunburst? I mean, your mom is worried about you not having a plan. I go, I currently have a job at the highest position of where I live. I'm sorry, he has an in with the royal family of the Crystal Empire. I don't think you really need to worry. I think he's doing pretty good right now. Because he's the Chrysler for Flurry Heart. That's a huge thing. And he happens to be on speaking terms with one of the princesses, well, multiple princesses of Equestria. Because he's the Chrysler to... Flurry Heart, whose mother is Princess Miyamori Cadenza. And then Twilight Sparkle, not to mention one of the most powerful unicorns on the planet. I'm talking about Starlight here. Because she took on Twilight Sparkle and almost won. Twilight Sparkle. post alicorn Twilight Sparkle. Oi, that's like walking up to Satama and flicking him in the nose. And actually connecting. And actually standing a chance against him. I'm like, whoa. I don't know if that would actually be an interesting fight or not. Saitama versus Alicorn. Hmm. I don't know. So far, most of the Alicorns don't seem very combative. More defensive. So. Oh, well, we should probably get close to wrapping this thing up now. We should, but seriously, as Sunburst, I would have brought that up. He's got more to, well, yeah, both of them could have brought up the fact that we have very good lives right now. I am a guidance counselor at the School of Friendship underneath the Princess of Friendship, Twilight Sparkle herself, who saved Equestria multiple times, including from me. <laughs> multiple times. And I've spoken and am friends with Celestia herself. I helped Princess Celestia and Princess Luna with a friendship problem. I think I'm doing okay. I think I'm an adult now. Just all the things they're going to brought up to their parents. It's kind of like when we're watching an episode and we do that whole thing of like, you know, at the beginning of this episode, this whole thing could have been solved by the fact that they can teleport. <laughs> or, you know, if they just like said one thing at the beginning of the episode, this episode wouldn't have happened. <laughs> or something else like Pinkie Pie can teleport through walls without magic. What, it's not funny enough? What, you're trapped in handcuffs and you can get out anytime you want, but only if it's funny. 
So, outro. Outro. And this has been our thoughts on parents. I mean, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 8, Episode 8, The Parent Map. So, hi, welcome to the outro. Here is where we make all our regular plugs. And no, we don't read them from a cue card. We do try to change it up every so often. There are links for Lux's art. There are a lot more episodes on this channel. There's a like button, a subscribe button, a comment button. Buttons are nice. You know, help you with your jacket and stuff. I like buttons. I like potatoes. <laughs> I like chocolate milk. Chocolate milk, chocolate milk. So his name's Cheese. Blue Cheese. Mac and Cheese? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cheese Louise. And we have other links to commissions and Patreon and Coffee. Those links, you can click on them for free, but to get anything done, in-app purchases are required. At least we don't nickel and dime you to death. Like, we won't stop this podcast in sentence just to have you pay for more of it. <laughs> also, no data caps. We hope. Sorry if you have them. Uh, we're not imposing any. So yeah, Patreon starts at a dollar. You can go higher than that, but it's a one dollar minimum. And coffee works in increments of three. Patreon, if you're not familiar, is a monthly subscription. You do get a chance to review it each month before you're charged. And coffee is single donation. Increments of three requires PayPal. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments. Dialogues, suggestions, and of course financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.